Now I'm going to start the discussion of why AngularJS by talking a little bit about what all these client-side frameworks are trying to solve. What's the problem they're trying to solve? Uh, AngularJS is one of several client-side programming frameworks. You have a lot of them out there. You have Ember, Backbone, React, and there are a lot more coming up. So what are all these client-side frameworks trying to do? What's the problem that they're all trying to solve? So we covered why we need JavaScript. We have the DOM tree and any view change that needs to happen needs to modify the DOM tree. And HTML being a static language does not do that. You need JavaScript to interact and modify the DOM tree based on user interaction so that you have view updates that happen on the client side. Now, how does this DOM manipulation look like? So JavaScript has an API which does DOM manipulation. So here's an example from the Mozilla Developer Network for how to change the color of a particular uh, paragraph tag. So you have this basic HTML code here, with the paragraph tag, which has some text, and you have buttons, which have an on-click event hook. All right, so this calls a JavaScript method called change color, and it passes in the color name. And now in the change color, there is a color which is accepted, and what this method has to do is it has to get the element from the DOM tree that it wants to modify, which it does by saying get element by ID of para1, which is this paragraph, which has the ID para1, and then it gets that node and it changes the color of that node, all right? So this is how a typical JavaScript DOM manipulation works. You write code to get whatever you need to manipulate, right? There's a DOM tree already, right? So you say, hey, browser, give me that element. You get the element, you modify it, and then the browser reflects it in the view. Right? So this is how it typically works. As you can see, this is not very elegant code. Right? It takes a while for you to get used to it if you're new to it. Right? So here are some reasons why this code sucks, at least in my opinion. First of all, the code is very messy. Right? It's not elegant. Secondly, there is no separation of concerns. The JavaScript code that you've written is very much tied to the HTML. The JavaScript code kind of assumes that there is a paragraph uh, element with the ID para1 because that's how it gets the element from the DOM, right? It needs to know that there is an element there. So the code in JavaScript is very tightly coupled to the code in the HTML. So it's harder to maintain and it's harder to test. So we definitely need something better. We need some way of writing JavaScript code on the client side without having it be so messy or without having it be coupled to the DOM. You might say, well, Kashik, what's the big deal? It works, right? The problem though is it works for simple applications, but imagine using this kind of a code to build an application like Gmail, which is very, very interactive and has a lot of functionality. So we need something better. What are the elements on the client side? We have the HTML, which is the view that you need to modify. And you have the data that feeds the view, okay? So you have data that populates the view. And they have the logic which takes the data and controls the view, all right? So this should look familiar. What we're looking at is the view, model, and controller. This is the typical MVC, all right? So as long as you have this separation of these three elements, the code becomes easier to write and maintain, right? So this is the same problem that server-side developers have had for ages, all right? We've had, uh, we were able to live with having the whole thing live in one particular JavaScript file and HTML file on the client side because the applications weren't so complex. But over the years, client side applications have grown in complexity. So you need this segregation on the client side too. All right. So these are the standard elements. And this is the reason why you have a lot of client side MVC frameworks. All right. So a lot of these client side frameworks are MVC frameworks, even though they may not call themselves that. So this is a problem that all these different client side frameworks are trying to solve. And this is the problem that Angular is trying to solve as well. So in the next unit, we're going to look at AngularJS. We're going to see how Angular solves this problem.